Hello there. My name is Crafty Kathy, and on my channel, you will find love, laughs, and DIYs. I want to say hello to all my subscribers. You guys know I love you from the bottom of my heart. And if you're new here, let me introduce myself. I am Crafty Kathy, and I'm tickled pink that you're here. Today, I have some gorgeous French country farmhouse DIYs for you guys. I think you're really going to like these. They're not your traditional pink, red, and white valentines. I wanted to put a little spin on it and let you see something different. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet. Now let's jump into DIY number one. Hey guys, it's me. It's Crafty Kathy, and here is Miss Foxy Roxy. And we just wanted to jump on to let you know that this is a video valentine compilation video. And that means that it's a couple of my favorite Valentine DIYs over the years that I've put together. And they're not particularly in order. You may be watching the fifth DIY and it's say DIY number two, for example. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. Also, there's a few skits of Bobby Joe on there from the last few Valentine's Days. And I know you're going to love that because she is the angel of love. And we also have my sweet little boy, Sabby, on there because he always had to make his appearance and sing. So, we love you guys very much, and I hope that you like this. And tell them bye, Waxy. Say bye. Say bye. Say bye. Say bye. <laughs> you little rascal. And we will see you guys soon. Bye. This one is so cute, it's going to be a little kissing booth. So I started off with this little crate from Dollar Tree. I'm going to paint it this beautiful color called Sunset Rose. And it's made by Home Decor. And it's so pretty. It's almost like a mauve color, which I like for Valentine's Day. I'm not too much into the very pinkies and reds and whites. They're traditional colors. I like these shabby chic colors. They're just so Victorian and romantic, and I think they're beautiful. So all I did was give this only one coat of paint because that's all it took. When I am finished with this, look at this gorgeous color. Like, this is one of my most favorite colors. This and kind of like a mauve rose color. Not that that matters, but that's my favorite color. Next, I took some of the wood dowels that comes from the Dollar Tree, and I wanted to do these black. So, I made myself a stain, and the way that I did that is I used my little squirt gun, and it's one of those continuous sprayers, and I sprayed it on the dowel, and then I would paint it with the black paint. I find this so much easier than having to mix it up and all that. And then you just wipe off the excess with a paper towel or a baby wipe, and you've got yourself a black stain. I got my little continuous sprayer at Amazon, and it is in my Amazon store in case you're on the lookout for one. The next thing I did was use my pewter gray from Apple Barrel to paint the very top part of my kissing booth. And I painted it on the front side and the back side because you will see all sides of this. Now we're gonna do a little decoupage. I have this beautiful pink French napkin and I'm going to open it up and I only need one piece of this napkin. So I just cut off the piece that I need and when I'm decoupaging, I like to use a brush with my Mod Podge that is a smaller type brush with a flat head. Now, I dip my finger just a little bit in the Mod Podge, and this helps to separate the layers. It's very important to separate these layers. See how easily it opens up? Most of the napkins have two layers on the back, and if you don't separate them, that last layer is the one that'll stick and your actual picture will look bubbly. I lay my napkin down on my crate so I can get an idea of where I want to put it at. And I kind of use my fingers to shape so I can know where to cut the ends off at. I will either use a paintbrush or my fingers to get my edges. And the way I'm going to do this is spray my fingers with my continuous sprayer and I use the wetness on my fingers there to kind of pull apart my napkin. 
Now a straight edge on a napkin, if you just laid it down and it's the straight edge, it does not look good. It looks best if you kind of rip it this way because it just looks more natural. So I keep my fingers wet and I use that to kind of go around. Or like I said, I will use a fine small paintbrush to do so. And before I get started with my project, I like to have my saran wrap ready. That way I can grab it as soon as I put my decoupage on. So I start off by just putting a thin layer of my Mod Podge down in the middle of the project. And then the next thing I'm going to do is take the napkin and lay it down right in the center. I like to start in the center and kind of work my way out. And you just have to take your time. You have to go very slowly. And at first I do use my fingers and kind of push down so that it will get that adhesion going and just kind of stick. Then I use my saran wrap. And with your saran wrap, you can go over the top of it. You can get any wrinkles out. You can just uh, go in circles or kind of, you know, maneuver back and forth to make sure that you don't have any wrinkles. And then as you see, I just go on the sides just a little bit more there. And then I lay that napkin down. I let it fall as it wants. And then I use my saran wrap to kind of push it down. Now that saran wrap helps in two ways. It helps keep all the wrinkles out. If you use saran wrap and you practice at this, you will not have any wrinkles. Also, it helps because that Mod Podge and that napkin will stick to your finger and it will ruin your project. So, if you do use that saran wrap, nothing's going to stick and or to your fingers. So, it just helps so much more. And then I'm going to do my last little piece here on the side and then I'm going to complete on the other side. I've had so many people ask me questions about the decoupaging and by no means am I professional but I have used my time to try to learn from my mistakes. And I used to get a lot of wrinkles. But when I started using that saran wrap, I found that there were no wrinkles. Look, there's no wrinkles at all in this. And then just take your time. If you just do those two things, you're going to have a successful decoupage. And with just a little bit of practice, it gets easier. The next thing I'm going to do is take my four wood dowels and I'm going to put one down each of the back corners of my box. This is going to hold my roof on. So you just put your glue in the back corners and lay your little dowel down and hold on to it for a few minutes and it's gonna stick there. And then I went ahead and put my roof on and you kinda have to lay it down and see exactly where your glue's gonna go. It just took two little dots of glue to hold the back of this on. Now I want my roof to have a little bit of a slant. So I just slanted it in a downward type motion. Then I just measured where the other two of my dowels need to go. And I cut the ends of those off with some tin snips. And then I hot glued those on just like the back two dowels. I think this little kissing booth is adorable and it's just a little whimsical touch to put out in your living room. And I think most people put Hershey's Kisses in them. I use my little finger sander to sand off the sides of that napkin. And then I use a little emery board like a nail file just to go in between those little divots that's in the front of my crate. I've got a little package of wood stickers from the Dollar Tree that are hearts, and I'm gonna take one out and paint it with my Apple Barrel white acrylic paint. I used my Cricut to print out a font that says Kissing Booth, and I'm gonna place that on my heart. Then I just glued the heart to the side of my Kissing Booth. And then I hand wrote five cents on the side. I had put some black and white half beads across the top and I did not like it and later pulled it off. So I'm not gonna show you that part, but I am gonna show you where I made the little banner. I just took the lace ribbon that comes from the Dollar Tree and I kind of drooped it across the top from those first two dowels so it would look like a little banner. Then I cut out the XOXO 
from this little transfer pack that comes from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to place that right in the very center part of my banner. Then on the top part of my napkin, there was a picture of, I guess it's the queen or like a lady up in the top. And I wanted that on my kissing booth. So I cut it out and put it up toward the top by the Eiffel Tower. And I'm going to take this gorgeous little bow that came from Totally Dazzled. And I'll put their link down in the description box below in case you want some of their jewels. And I'm going to put that right on the very front dowel. But I absolutely love using their little jewels in my DIYs because it just brings everything up a notch. I put three of the half beads, one of each color, on each side of my banner. Then I took my gray paint that was left on my brush and just kind of distressed really lightly all around the piece and around the front. And now I'm going to take some of these cute little fairy lights that I have, and I'm going to place them inside my little kissing booth. Now I'm going to take some of these little soft flowers that I had ordered off of Amazon. I've had them for a really long time, and I haven't really used them. I've got a light pink and a darker pink, and I'm just going to clip the very ends of them off. And I'm going to take these little transfers that I got from this sheet from the Dollar Tree again. And it's French writing. And I'm going to put that on the petals of the flowers. I love adding little unexpected touches. It just brings it up a notch. And this really turned out pretty. Then I just take those flowers and I'm going to glue them to the top of my little kissing booth. Then I added one of the small solar wood flowers to the front of those to complete it. Now we're heading into DIY number two. This one was requested from one of my subscribers who said that my little white birds that I use a lot in my staging pictures that I should decoupage. And I thought, what a brilliant idea. So I have a couple pieces of these little, just little pieces of napkins, and they're mostly flowers. And these are my little birds. I got these at the Dollar General store last summer for a dollar a piece. And they're normally blue, but I painted them white, and then I just kind of distressed them with a darker gray color. So all I'm going to do is start on his tail. I'm going to put a little Mod Podge. Now, these birds, they have a lot of decoration, little divots in their feathers, in the uh, tail, and everything. So what we're going to do is put our small pieces of napkin and you use small pieces when you decoupage stuff like this. And then, of course, we're going to use our saran wrap. And we're going to use that to push that napkin down in the divots. And it's going to be beautiful. So once I got my first little piece of napkin on him, I used my brush and the Mod Podge to kind of push down and around through those divots also. You want all of the beautiful features of the bird to be seen, like his beak and his feet. So I just went all over my bird, decoupaging the small flowers all over him. And when you're finished with your whole project, you can't tell that it was small pieces put together to make the project. It all comes together just in some miraculous way, and it looks perfect and seamless. It doesn't at all look like it's pieces being put together. But when it was done, I just wasn't happy with that mauve color on this bird. It just didn't seem to look right in my mind. I wanted to use that napkin that had the lighter pink flowers on it, and it did actually look better because the flowers were smaller, and it worked like a charm. This is what the bird originally looked like, and you see the mauve flowers, which isn't bad, but for some reason, I just didn't like it, and I feel like it was because those flowers were too big. So this is the second napkin that I used and as you see the flowers are a lighter pink and they're much much smaller 
and it just seemed to work so much better for me. And since I was Mod Podging on an object like this bird, it was no problem to go right over that first napkin that I had put down because you can't tell the difference. I did push everything down in those divots, so all I had to do was just put the second napkin on and push it down just as I did the first one, and I finally got the result I wanted. Then I took my Dollar Tree transfer sheet that had all the French words on it, and I cut out a large portion. I'm not really sure what it said, <laughs> but I put that on the side of my bird because I thought it gave it the cutest little neat touch. And I also put like the word amour on him and just different things. I thought it was beautiful the way it turned out. I also decoupaged this beautiful little pink heart. It's from the Dollar Tree, and it was on a skewer. It was pink and had glitter all over it, and I'm not about the glitter, so I Mod Podged right over it and put a piece of the napkin on it, and it turned out cute as a button, too. I got a small block shelf from a thrift store for 50 cents. I took it outside and spray painted it white. I'm going to use it to put my little bird on. I brought it back in after it was dried, and I sanded it down real quick. And then I took a lid that goes to a bath and body candle, and I'm going to paint it truffle. Now, I'm just going to quickly paint over this because I'm going to use it as the nest for the bird. And all I'm trying to do is disguise that candle lid in case it shows under the nest. I just grabbed a small bit of the Spanish moss that I had from another project and kind of rolled it almost like a ball in my hands. And I put little pieces of potpourri because, you know, when you look in a bird's nest, it's got sticks in it and all these other pieces. And those had like walnut pieces in it and other stuff in that potpourri. So I just kind of fashioned it into a little bird's nest and I laid it on top of that candle lid. And that's going to be our nest. I took some Dollar Tree modeling clay that I found back in the summer, cut small pieces off, and rolled it into little balls to make it look like eggs, and I made three of those to go in my nest. I also stuck a small solar wood flower in my nest because I thought it gave it a cute little French touch, and then I'm just going to lay my nest in my little shelf. I'm going to take some more of those French words from my little Dollar Tree transfer, and we're going to just put those on the top and on the bottom of our little shelf. I like the ease of these transfers because all you do is stick them on there and use a little Cricut tool or a credit card or something and peel it away, and voila, you have French writing on your decor. And I also stuck that little heart that I had decoupaged inside the nest. I took another one of those little soft pink flowers from before, clipped the back of it off, and glued it to the very top of my shelf. But I didn't glue my bird because I want to be able to take him off. And that's it. I think this one is my favorite. If you're still not subscribed to my channel yet, what in the world are you waiting for? Hit that little red button and become part of our family here on YouTube. We would love to have you. And don't forget to give me that big thumbs up. It really helps my channel and helps YouTube notice me more. On the third one, we're going to make a gorgeous wreath out of drop cloth. Now, you can get your drop cloth from Walmart or any hardware store like Lowe's, Home Depot, I got mine off of Amazon, and I found that it was a little bit cheaper. And I did make sure that I linked it in my Amazon store in case you want one. So I just simply unfolded my drop cloth, and I laid it in a way to where it would be lapped over each other four times. I took a four-inch lid, which for me, it was a Bath & Body Works candle lid, you can use any size you want, but I found that four inches is just about the right size. 
all I did was trace a bunch of circles. Now you're going to make a lot of circles in this project. That is why I lapped over my drop cloth four times because when I cut it, I'm cutting out four pieces instead of just one. So I basically just made a bunch of circles and then I just went and cut them out. Now you're gonna need a styrofoam wreath form and I just used this green one from the Dollar Tree and then you're gonna need your circles and you're gonna need some straight pins. All you're gonna do is take one of your circles, fold it in half like a taco and then fold it in half again. I'll show you one more time. Fold it in half like a taco and then just fold it in half again. Then you're gonna pin the bottom of it to your styrofoam. And you're just gonna kind of pinch that over a little bit and pin it on the other side. And as you can see down at the bottom, you kind of pinch it over right there, the tip of it, and then pin it from the other side. And I'm gonna show you again in slow motion. I take the circle and I'm gonna fold it over like a taco and then fold it over once again. And then the very tip of it is going to be curved in one direction and I'm gonna come in from the back and put the pin. This is going to cause it to kind of stand up, if you will. And when we're finished with all these, you fluff it and it's gonna be the most beautiful wreath. It's just gorgeous but you put as much of these on there as you want. I kind of put them on the very front of the wreath and kind of on the bottom part of the front and the inner part, if that makes sense. The only part that we don't pin the drop cloth design on is going to be on the back, but we are going to cover that with just regular drop cloth, but we're not going to fold it and all that jazz. I'm going to show myself doing the first half of my wreath in fast motion just so you can get a reference of what I meant. As far as the front of the wreath and then the bottom half of the wreath and the top half. You see what I'm doing? Any part that is not laying on that table, I'm pretty much going to cover. And then when you open it up, it's going to look almost like a flower. And you don't have to put them terribly close together, but you'll just kind of get the rhythm once you get started. Now, here I am when I'm almost finished, and you're going to want to put some type of a ribbon on it or whatever you're going to use to hold it with. What I did was just saw how, like, how far down I wanted it to hang, and I doubled that, cut it, and glued it together so that would be my my little hanger and actually right before i glued it i also put a couple of those straight pins in it just to make sure that it's going to stay exactly where i wanted it and this ribbon by the way is a gift that was sent to me by burlapfabric.com I quickly finished up the last little bits of wreath. Anywhere that I could see showing, I would just add extra. I really had no rhyme or reason to how much I was putting, but some places it seemed like needed more and some needed less. But like I say, you learn the rhythm as you go. And since when you flip it over or hang it up on a mirror, you would be able to see that green part, all I did was took my extra circles that I had left over and I would lay them down and lap them over each other and just simply glue them down. And I also glued them to where they would not be sticking out whenever you did hang it up um, because that would look kind of odd. I just kind of glued them around that green wreath form. And when I ran out of my circles, I just started cutting random pieces of that drop cloth and using that until the whole thing was covered. Then when everything was covered, I flipped it over and fluffed it out. And then I had one of these beautiful little 
heart-shaped wood pieces that came from the Dollar Tree in a pack, and it had like the little heart inside of it that was cut out. And I used that exact same napkin and decoupaged that heart. Then I took one of those larger size nail files that you get from the Dollar Tree and went around the sides of that heart to get the napkin off because it makes a perfect edge. Now we're going to place that heart in the center of our wreath and I'm going to use this hemp cord that I got from the Dollar General and I'm going to use this darker brown color. I think it's so pretty. I just put that cord through that little heart and all I'm gonna do is pin it up at the very top in the middle part of my wreath. When I got it up there, I noticed that I had forgot to take that middle heart out. So I just took an emery board because it is the perfect thing to make the perfect edge on your napkin. And I just used that to get all of that napkin off. And you know, I said the last project, the little bird was my favorite, but I don't know, this wreath is awful hard to beat. It's really beautiful and shabby chic and just French country. It's so pretty. Let's move on to the last one, and this is gonna be really quick and easy. I've been playing around with my sublimation machine and I've got these pillowcases, the kind that goes on your couch like a throw pillow. And I got them from Hobby Lobby. They're $4.99 originally, but you get them for half off, so you're only paying $2.50 a piece for them. And then I put my little pad that goes to my Cricut inside there. And we're going to try to get this wrinkle out because it's like a cross across the middle part. I made two different designs, and this is the one that's going to go on a shirt. It's 1 Corinthians 16, 14, and all you do, do in love. And I made this pattern on Canva, and this is the very first time that I've made my own pattern. I also made one that's going to go on this canvas pillow, and it's beautiful, and it's like a shabby chic, like a French country looking flower arrangement, and I put the word bloom there, and that's this one. That's the one that's going on the pillow. So all I do is lay it down, and then I measured everything just to make sure that my pattern was right in the very center, but mostly I eyeball it. I just kind of had a good idea of where to put it, but I kind of double checked with the measurements. And I totally forgot to put down my tape. You're supposed to tape it down, but then I put my piece of wax paper and then for 75 seconds, I hold my heat press on the top of it at 400 degrees and you lightly push down, nothing harsh. And it's going to cause that pattern to come out on this pillowcase. Then after my 75 seconds have passed, I take everything off and man, this is beautiful. It's very shabby chic and just sweet looking. It's going to look great on my couch and I'm going to make a couple of more to match it. Now, my last project is going to be basically the same thing, and it's going to go really fast. I bought a shirt from the Dollar Tree, and it's kind of like an aqua blue color. It's the only shirt I had, and you're kind of supposed to use a light-colored shirt, but this is all I had. So, I wanted this Bible verse on the shirt, and I'm actually going to do this in the same fashion. I'm going to lay it down. And this time I actually taped it down and then I put my wax paper and we go at 400 for 75 seconds. And when I lifted it up, this one turned out beautiful too. But I honestly believe that if I would have had a white shirt or maybe a light gray shirt, it would have looked even better because the coloration that you see that's almost like a darker color, the outer color is actually a grayish color, and I just think it would have looked better. But anyways, I was just kind of playing around to see what I would come up with, and I wanted to show you guys. I happened to make my words white, and they didn't stick out enough for me, so I used a fine point Sharpie so that I could just kind of trace over, let all you do be done in love, 
and I just kind of traced over it to make it stand out a little bit, and I'm glad I did because it turned out pretty good. Especially for one of my first times of ever fooling with the sublimation that much. With Christmas and all, I didn't have time to really kind of play around with it and see what I could do. But now I'm on the move and I'll be making pillows and all kinds of stuff. And hey, if you stuck around through this whole video, I just want to say thank you so much. I'm going to show you the projects one more time. And then don't forget to watch the bloopers. And I will see you guys very soon. I love y'all, and I hope that y'all enjoyed this and got a little Valentine inspiration. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. It's Crafty Bobby Joe. Well, I guess I could say sad Bobby Joe today. My world isn't turning anymore. Beefer done run off and left me with old Sally Ann down the holler. Remember the one that he said he would never date? Well, he took off and run right off with her. Huh. You know, Sally Ann ain't got nothing to offer. She does have an extra nose, but I know it's because her mama and daddy are first cousins. Now, how am I going to compete with that? My mom and daddy are just third cousins. Now, y'all know me. Because this here has been my show for a few months now. All my show. Kathy don't put in on this show no more. It's all me. So if there's any big Hollywood producers out there, it's all me. Okay? So I was just saying, y'all know me. Now, I'm always happy and cheerful. And I ain't going to let Buford hold me down. He ain't going to do me this way. I will get him back. Now, on account of his daddy is kin to the sheriff, I'm going to have to be real careful about how I do this. But somebody needs to tell me what I can do. Should I just bust his tars? Should I bust Sally Ann's tars? Or should I just bust both of them in the head with something? I don't know. Bobby Joe! What in the world are you in there telling them people? Honey, I told you don't ever go and talk about doing terrible stuff to Buford and Sally Ann. At least don't do it where people can hear you, honey. You got to execute your plan and just go through with it. Now, I'd rather break my arm than talk about anybody in any negative way, but Buford and Sally Ann deserves everything you give them. If you want to bust their tars, honey, I'll help you. I'll bring the crowbar. I'll bring the screwdriver. But he will not disrespect my family name. Hey, guys. I just wanted to let y'all know that I don't really think it's right for y'all to be executing plans to, like, do anything against Sally Joe and Buford. I mean, Bobby Joe, you're um, <clears throat> a really beautiful and everything and so if you want to find you another feller just go get you another feller honey i mean you're better off without him right if he's going to do you that way then he don't deserve your time or your beauty cousin kathy you just don't understand you just don't know what beaver meant to me all my life has been nothing but disappointment. And all I've ever wanted to do was get out of these Tennessee hills and go to California and be a big actor. Like, I just know that it's in my soul to be. And I just don't know what I'm going to do without him. Now, see there what you did, Kathy. You got my Bobby Joe all tore up. Are you proud of yourself? Look at you sitting over there talking about French farmhouse. Let me make a kissing booth. Boy, howdy. All you do is show that Valentine's stuff on that channel, and you're doing it on account of to try to hurt Bobby Joe and bring her down, because Valentine's Day's coming up, and you knew she wasn't going to have Buford. Now, Aunt Ethel, you know me better than that, and you know that I would never do something like that to hurt Bobby Joe. 
Is there anything I can do to make it better for you, Bobby Joe? No, it ain't never gonna get no better. <gasps> As a matter of fact, Cousin Kathy, there is something that you can do for me. Let all them big old Hollywood agents out there know that Bobby Joe Stillman is a woman of her word. And even though my heart is broken in two, that I will still be the best Hollywood actress they've ever seen or model. I can sing too. B for baby, these headshots are specifically for you and any big Hollywood agents that's out there watching. Today, I've got some beautiful French farmhouse decor for you. We are going to paint and stain some mason jars and find the very best technique to do that. We're going to decoupage, and we're also going to do all kinds of DIYs along the way. Now, these are going to be beautiful for Valentine's Day and the spring. It's going to be here before we know it. So, let's jump right in. For the first DIY, we're going to start painting our mason jars. Now, it doesn't matter what type of mason jar you have or any glass jar, you're going to have to clean it inside and out with alcohol. You just wipe it down with a paper towel really good and it gets any smudges or prints off. Now, I've heard some people say that chalk paint is the very best way to paint these. Some say acrylic and I even have a special paint that is just for glass. So I thought what we would do is try out a bunch of different methods so we can find out for ourselves which one is the best way to paint a mason jar. So after I got everything cleaned up with the alcohol, I'm going to take the Home Decor brand chalk paint in the color Sheepskin. It's kind of an ivory color and it's already chalk paint, but I wanted mine to be just a tad bit thicker. And so I'm going to add Johnson & Johnson's talc. It can't be the regular baby powder. It has to be the baby powder with the talc in it. Somebody said that you can't order this in the United States anymore. I'm not really sure. I ordered mine off of Amazon and it's in my Amazon store in case you want some. So basically all I'm doing is taking regular old chalk paint and thickening it up just a little bit. And I'm going to give this jar two coats. I'm actually going to give everything two coats, but I'm only going to show you one of each so I don't bore you to death. There's my first mason jar. The second one that I'm going to paint is just a small jar that I got from the Dollar Tree. It's not a mason jar, but it's a little glass jar and I think it's really pretty. I like the style of it. I'm just going to quickly paint through each of the mason jars for the sake of time. That way we can get to the end result and find out which is the best method for painting our jars. Also, we have some DIYs that we're going to be doing with these different jars. After we finish up with the chalk paint, our very next DIY is going to be trying out an acrylic paint called Treasured Gold. It's made by Folk Art and the color is rose gold. It is this beautiful metallic rose gold color, and it took two coats to cover this jar, and this is just a little vase that I got from the thrift store for like 50 cents, and I was really impressed with this paint. The way that it went on was very smooth, and I like to use these smaller paint brushes that have a flat end because I just think that the paint goes on smoother and it just has a better glide factor. For the third mason jar, we're going to use an apple barrel paint. An apple barrel comes from Walmart. We're going to use the color called khaki, which as you see is a pretty warm brown color. And it's an acrylic paint. Now once again, I was pretty impressed. This is the first time that I've used just regular old acrylic paint on a mason jar. And it too was very fluid, very easy. It wasn't thick. It just had a smooth glideability. And I hope that makes sense. Basically, I mean, it just glides across the glass really smooth and easy. I had a lot of that chalk paint left over that I started with. 
And that is my main color scheme that I wanted. It's that home decor sheepskin. It's kind of an ivory color. And so I'm just painting this jar with that. It's nothing new. I just had some extra left over and I wanted this jar that color. The next paint that we're going to use is one that is called enamels. It's made by Folk Art, and this is the one that claims that is specifically for glass. It's not exactly the color that I was wanting or goes with my scheme, but it's the only color in this type of paint that I had, and I wanted to give it a whirl since it said it was for glass. It was a glossy texture, and it did not go on the way that the other acrylic paints did. It didn't have that smooth glide factor, and it took a total of four coats. The next one that I have is this huge glass pickle jar. Now, you know that these are beautiful in any type of farmhouse decor. And so I took this one out and I used my Rust-Oleum two times spray paint in matte white and I gave it about two or three coats. I like using spray paint on glass. I like the technique as long as you don't get too close or try to put on too much at one time because you will get drips and it will ruin your whole project. So as long as you do it in small intervals and do it in about three different coats, it's going to turn out really nice. Now, before we move on to the next part and we start staining our mason jars, I just wanted to remind you, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please hit that little red subscribe button and become a part of our family. We would love to have you. And don't forget to give me a big thumbs up because it really helps my channel on YouTube. Before we move on with the video, I just want to say thank you to a company called LifeWit. They sent me this adorable collapsible hamper that is on the front of my table. And they also sent me this cool memory foam pillow. Now this memory foam pillow is very different because you can fill it up to whatever your comfort level is. It was so easy to open. All you had to do was just open it up. It has a zipper on the side. I opened the zipper and it comes with this little blue bag of your memory foam. That way you can add as much as you want to your pillow. Say goodbye to the one size fits all pillows. In the past, I've always had to buy like an extra firm, soft, or medium pillow. But if you buy the Life Whip pillow, you can fill it to your comfort level. And for me, I like that I had that control. My pillow's not too hard and it's not too soft. It's kind of right in the middle where I like it. It was easy to put together and I sat there and squished that thing for 10 minutes because it was so soft and fluffy. Now I'm gonna leave their information in the box below so that you guys can go get some of these products on your own and you're gonna love it. Now I'm gonna take this hamper and put a little farmhouse spin on it. I bought these Prima Design transfers and it's got a cow on it and it says farm fresh and a little barn. So all you have to do is cut out the transfers that you want and then you peel off the backing and you lay it down where you want it and you don't move it at all. And then you use the little tool that they give you and kind of scrape over it. And then you're gonna pull that top piece off and it's gonna look like it's just part of the original hamper. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the picture of the barn on the top. And guys, this hamper is so adorable and now it perfectly matches everything in my house, which is farmhouse. And I am up doing a lot of stuff in my house and changing things around. I just redid my bathroom and these are actually my colors and my style. So I'm loving this. And this is so much better than an old laundry basket because I have to lug our laundry up and down a spiral staircase. So I'm happy. All right, the next one is just gonna be a quick little DIY. I bought this gorgeous lantern at Discovery Outlet for $2.99. And it has a little glass votive inside of it where you put your candle. All I'm doing is taking a candle, and I'm sorry that it's not exactly in frame, but I'm just rubbing the wax all around the ornate design that's on this candle. And I love anything that has that ornate design to it. It's so pretty. 
I painted over it one time with my sheepskin chalk paint, and this is the result. All you do is take your little scraper or a scraping tool and go over it, and anywhere where you have rubbed that candle wax is going to be pulled up, and it's a beautiful chippy look. Now we're going to take a couple of our mason jars and do a little decoupaging. I've got these two napkins with beautiful French farmhouse chickens on them, and you have to cut out the design that you want. And what I do is put water on a small paintbrush, and I go around the edges and then pull it away with my finger. You want to pull apart your edges in that way because it just makes it look like it's a part of the glass. If you use a perfectly square napkin, it's going to look funny and it never looks right but I find this is the best way to do it. And if you accidentally rip your napkin a little bit, it's no problem. Once that Mod Podge hits it, you can actually put it back together and you can't even tell. I guess the best way to describe what I'm talking about is to show you right here. As you see, I only have the wording and the chicken. That's pretty much the main image and that's all I need. And I'm going to put it on that one mason jar that I painted khaki with the Alpha Barrel paint. This is probably my favorite. I like this one over the chalk paint. That's just my preference. I think the acrylic paint did much better. All I'm going to do is just put down some Mod Podge and I lay my napkin down. I try to hit right in the center of that napkin to start off. And then I go over the sides. First, I put down a thin layer underneath the design. Then I lay the design down and add the Mod Podge to the top and just kind of smooth it out as I go. I also found that it's imperative to use some type of saran wrap or plastic wrap so that you will not have wrinkles. You just lay it down and make sure there's no wrinkles in that saran wrap and just kind of run your finger around in a circle and it's almost like the heat from your body will will iron out any wrinkles that might be in that picture. And it turns out perfect every time. But you have to go very slow. This is sped up greatly and it's still taking a bit because I really take my time on these. The only downfall is on the back of this jar, it scratched off the paint where I had laid it on the table when I was putting the napkin on. But that's really no big deal to me. All I got to do is just repaint that part. So I guess the moral of the story is if you're not going to decoupage and you're going to paint your mason jar with acrylic paint, just go ahead and put some Mod Podge over it to cover and seal that paint. I have one more napkin that I'm going to put on, and I'm going to put this one on one of the mason jars that has the chalk paint. And so I just cut out basically the main shape, which is that chicken, and I wanted him standing on that post. So I cut that whole little piece out. And for whatever reason, I didn't show myself putting the Mod Podge on, but I did the exact same thing. I used my saran wrap so I did not get any wrinkles and this one turned out just as beautiful as the first. On the next one, we're going to use some of my IOD stamps. I have been wanting these stamps for the longest time. 
This is the very first time that I have ever used these. And I'm trying to do a little bit of different type of DIYs in case you guys didn't notice. Because I feel like a lot of us do the Dollar Tree DIYs and the stuff. And it just gets so repetitive. People seem like they're doing the same thing. And I want to do something different and give y'all something that maybe you haven't seen so much of. So anyways, you just take your stamp. And I'm, after I had sanded it down a little bit. Um, I put it on my ink pad and I went down and the first time I did it, I moved it around too much. Now I'm learning and I'm getting better, but my first time was not very good. You can actually see me sitting here when I pull it up thinking about it, tapping my fingers because I was so upset. I've waited for these stamps for so long. That's my first attempt, but here's my second attempt, and that looks so much better. I can always just spray back over the one that I didn't like. Now, I took the lids outside to all my mason jars and painted them black. And I just styled this with a little jute twine at the top. I hope you guys like it. Throughout this video, my point is to show you the different ways that you can paint these mason jars, which ways look best. And then of course I want to put a little spin on it and show you how I like to decorate with them. The next one is gonna be real quick and easy. I'm just gonna take a couple of the terracotta pots that come from the Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna dry brush them. Just run a little bit of that sheepskin color paint over them. And when I say I was using a dry brush, I mean, there was barely any paint whatsoever on my brush. So I just used the front side and put my stamp on. Then I flipped the little pot over and I did the other side. And then I had these little bitty tiny ones that my husband found at a thrift store. There was about 10 of them in a pack and they're so tiny that your thumbs can fit in them. They are the cutest things and I distressed two small ones and left one as is because I had a certain way I wanted to display these. And here in just a moment, I'm gonna show you guys how I made these little moss balls. The next one is a little hanging jar and I painted it sheepskin. And I'm just going to simply put a stamp on it. And as you see, as I go along, I keep getting better and better. This little vase has a hanger on the top. So I simply clamped it back in place. And I displayed it with some flowers and a cute little bird from the Dollar Tree. Now this one is so pretty, I think. As you see, the more that I practice with these stamps, the better off I'm getting. The next one is a little apothecary jar that came from the Dollar Tree and it has a little black metal top on it. I took some of the French writing that came off one of the transfer sheets from Dollar Tree, the one that says spring on it, and I picked one that says carte postale, and I thought that was cute. And I made just a simple little ribbon from like a ticking ribbon, and I put the ribbon around the jar. And that was it. These jars are so cute in bathrooms. And for some reason, I absolutely love them. And I can't find them in my store much anymore. Let me know in the comments if any of y'all see them anymore. Or maybe if it was just a seasonal thing. Look at the little birdie. He's sitting there waiting for spring too. This is the one that was for glass. Or it said it's for glass. As you see, it has a glossy finish, and it turned out okay. The only reason I can figure that they said that it's for glass is because it won't chip off as easily. Now, it is an acrylic paint. It's made by Folk Art, but I did not like this paint whatsoever. A lot of it was probably the color, but you could also see lines in it and the texture. You know what I mean? I just didn't like it. So I took my truffle chalk paint from Waverly, good old faithful, and I'm just going to give it one coat so I can cover this up. And who else is thinking of Nestle Quick or Yoohoo whenever I'm painting this? Now be honest, I got a hankering for some chalky milky.
I chose my stamp and it said something about marmalade and I just put it right across the top and pressed down for just a moment and I find that it's so much better that way. And then I took some of my DIY white wax and just kind of rubbed it all over it with a paper towel and then you rub it back off and it leaves kind of like a little bit of a white texture on it and it just gives it, I don't know, it's just a little flare and I like that. And I'm going to use another transfer. This one is from the little transfer pack from the Dollar Tree that says spring on it. And it says welcome sunshine. And I just think that this one's adorable. And I just tied some jute twine around the top. So I'm saving the best for last or my favorite. That is that rose gold metallic color by Treasured Folk Art. I just absolutely love the way that this one turned out. It was two coats, and it went on smooth. It's beautiful. I just love the color. And I just fashioned this by putting a stamp on it. And then I also tied one of the little pieces of ribbon that's from the Dollar Tree, the kind that looks like the Victorian lace because that is my favorite that Dollar Tree has. And I took a little Sola flower and popped it on the side. For Valentine's Day, this is how I like to decorate my home. That way it's not so cutesy and red and pink and white. I like those colors too, but I love the Victorian lace and French farmhouse. So out of all the different ways that we've painted mason jars so far, let me know in the comments which one your favorite is. For me, it has to be the acrylic paint. It was just so easy to use. And if it's a bigger piece, I would go with spray paint. Now the next one is going to be short and sweet. I picked up this beautiful candlestick from the thrift store. It had some original rust on it. So I went all over it with the candle anywhere where I wanted it to have a chippy look. And I used that Home Decor Sheepskin brand paint. I really sped this up because I know that you guys know how to paint. And so I just gave it one coat all over and then I just used my little Cricut tool to kind of chip it off or go over it, like scrape it. You can even use a credit card, you know, and just scrape it. And anywhere where that wax touched, it will pull that paint up and it just gives the most perfect chippy look. I will never go back to just sanding only. I might sand occasionally, but this is definitely going to be my new way of distressing everything because it turns out so pretty. Instead of putting the traditional candle on the top, I'm going to display mine with these moss balls, and I'm about to show you how to make them. I think they're so pretty, and they're just a timeless beauty, and they're very French farmhouse and very chic, but look how beautiful this candlestick turned out and how chippy and perfect. If y'all are still hanging on through this video, I just want to say thank you. I know that there's been a lot of information given in this video, a lot of different DIYs, and thank y'all for holding on through all my craziness. I just had a lot of stuff I wanted to show you. So let's move on to the next one. Now, this is simply how I made the moss balls. They're very easy to make. At the thrift store, I found this I guess it's like a twig ball, I guess you could call it. I really don't know what else to call it. A stick ball? I don't know. So I just used my Loctite spray adhesive, and where I would spray, I would simply just put some of that moss on it and then kind of press down with my hands. And then when I finished, I went all the way around the moss ball. Then when I was totally done, I gave it a good spray, almost like a hairspray, so we could spray it and it would stay on there. And I used my hands to kind of press it in so it would hold on and not fall off. I made that on this twig ball and I also had some styrofoam round balls that I made it on. And you do the same technique. You spray your adhesive and just press it on. And I think it turned out beautiful. On the next one, I don't even know if I would call it a DIY. 
I just found this beautiful little candle stand and I love, love, love candle stands and candlesticks from the thrift store. And I thought it was so beautiful because it had all this ornate design. And you know, anytime that I distress something that has that ornate design, it just brings it out and it's so beautiful. I just lightly dry brushed all over the surface of this. And by dry brushing, I mean I literally had next to nothing of paint left on my brush. Then I just used my little Cricut tool to kind of chip it up a little bit. And ah, oh, magic. Now this last part is gonna go really fast and it's where we're gonna stain a couple of our mason jars and bottles. I have five different bottles or jars that came from the thrift store and they're just different kinds. I absolutely love this one. I think it looks like a little shabby chic bottle. So what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of Mod Podge in a bowl. And the first thing that I was gonna try was some blue food coloring. But the only blue food coloring I had was this kind that you use for cookies. And it was like a oil-based gel. And I added a little bit of water to it. And I couldn't figure out why it wasn't, you know, mixing up really well. And it's because it was oil. If it was just drops, I think it would have been better. But I thought, oh, well, I've mixed it up. We're going to try this and see what happens. The worst thing that could happen is it, it's a big flop, you know. So basically you just put it in your jar and then you just roll it around and kind of tilt it downward so it will flow down to the end and then you get the excess out. When the excess comes out, you flip it upside down there and let it kind of drain on something. And I noticed when the jar had drained down that since it was oil, it was still kind of not doing right. So I took a few drops of my yellow food dye. It wasn't a gel base, it was just regular because yellow and blue make green. And so I thought maybe I could kind of swirl it together and either get like a pattern that would be blue and green or maybe just all green. And so I let all of that drain down to the bottom and I kept it upside down so that it could dry. The next one that I'm going to do is this paint called Color Shift, and it's called Violet Flash. It's kind of a metallic-y purple, I guess you could call it, and they say that the color kind of shifts, and it's got different colors in it, which I thought that this would be pretty interesting. I just added a little bit of it to my bowl and a little bit of Mod Podge and stirred it around, and we are going to pour this inside that one beautiful vase that's already French Farmhouse and so pretty because I thought that it would make a beautiful combination. Now, it turned out beautiful in and of itself, but when I get finished with all these, I'm going to put them in, in a 275 degree oven for about 45 minutes to an hour and see what I come up with. Now, this time I'm just gonna try regular acrylic paint. It's called Lullaby Blue. I added some of that and then some Mod Podge and we're gonna try it in our little baby jar. On the next one, I'm going to use what's left of that Lullaby Blue color and add a little bit of this Aqua color from the Color Shift line. And I just mixed it in and it became this beautiful French farmhouse like aquamarine kind of color that's so pretty and very popular in the French farmhouse. And I'm going to put that in my favorite little jar and let the excess leak out of that. Now it's time to take these inside and put them in the oven and I put them in there for an hour at 275 and the purple one I eventually had to flip it upside down because it wasn't doing right turned right side up. So after an hour's time I got a beautiful presentation. This is how they turned out. This is everything when I was finished. This is the little baby jar that had the regular acrylic paint. This one is a stain that was nothing more than green food coloring in Mod Podge. This one was the color shift, 
and Mod Podge. And once it dried, you could actually see that there was a silhouette of another bottle inside this bottle. It was pretty cool. And then my favorite is this blue color, which is the lullaby color mixed with the color shift. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got some good French farmhouse inspiration and maybe learned something that you didn't know before. I learned that spray painting is my favorite way to go when you're using a bigger object and the acrylic paint is right underneath it, followed by the chalk paint, and I absolutely fell in love with that rose gold. And if you guys stayed to the end of this video, you are my champions. Thank you so much. I know it was a lot of info and I love you guys. Now y'all better stay tuned for them bloopers. Ladies and gents, this is Crafty Bobby Joe, and I'm so glad that you came here to my show to come see me. Guys, I'm sorry I haven't been around much, but guess what? I found me a bow. I sure did. He come from up the holler. His name's Buford, and oh my gosh, he's just got the prettiest brown eyes I have ever seen in my life. And Mama says that he's going to break my heart. But I don't think so. Because he's just too good looking to do me wrong. Bobby Joe, I have done told you time and time again, honey. You've just got a tender heart. Now, the way that you care for everybody else's youngins and all them critters that run around in these here Tennessee hills, you even bring rattlesnakes back to help. You just got a tender way about you, darling. And that's all I'm saying is I'm afraid you're going to get your heart broke. You know old Buford was at the BFW with Sally Ann, Gladys and Homer's daughter. It was just last week they had some kind of New Year's Eve fiasco trying to act like they were high society. And guess who else was there? Your cousin Kathy. She seen it. You can ask her. He's just going to do you wrong. Just for the record, I have never went out with that old trashy Sally Ann. Everybody knows what kind of woman she is. <sighs> and she just ain't the kind of woman I want in my life. I want a real woman. I want a Bobby Joe. I want somebody that's going places. <laughs> just don't think that he could ever do me wrong. Just look in his eyes. There's nothing but good intentions hiding behind them big old eyeballs of his. You know that he's just the sweetest thing that could ever come into my life. And how dare you try to hurt me and break us up before we even get started down our long path of love. You know, Ethel, you can say what you want to about me and the decisions that I've made in my love life in the past. But I think you just need to leave Bobby Joe alone and just let her be. I mean, everybody gets their heart broken. You can't protect her. And plus, it would be one mouth less to feed in our house. Gladys, for Pete's sake, hush your mouth! Nobody asked you. Now, Bobby Joe, you listen to me right now. If I have to, I'll go out there and get that chain off of that coon hound and I will put it around you, girl. I basically forbid you to see that boy. I just know he's got bad intentions and he's going to hurt you. I can see that in his eyes. Well, Mama, you might as well just give up. I guess you'll just have to put that chain around me because Buford's done asked me to marry him. Don't look at me. I figured it was darn near time. We've been dating three days now. I mean, what's the chances of falling in love with a beauty like Bobby Joe? And right before she makes it to Hollywood and hits it on the big time. So me and her 
are planning on betroving and moving off to California. And we'll be seeing you there. If you don't like it, don't come to the wedding. Well, actually, I can't afford a wedding. But don't come to the courthouse if you don't like it. That's the Tennessee way. Well, kids, looks like you done made your mind up. There ain't nothing I can do. So you go on, Bobby Joe. You go on and you leave me. And your twin sister, Jojo, I can't believe you're doing this to us. But since you're going to California and all, I will be visiting because I will make sure that he does you right. You know, I just don't know what to do. I'd rather break my arm than talk about anybody in any kind of negative way. I would go talk to my cousin Kathy down the holler, but she's so tied up in that YouTube stuff, trying to teach people how to paint a mason jar. Everybody knows that mason jars are for drinking sweet tea out of. I mean, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Who would do something like that? And she's talking about French farmhouse. I don't know, but I will let you know what comes of this because that Bobby Joe, she will not break my heart. Mama, it's okay. It's going to be all right. On account of I know that it's right before Valentine's Day. I mean, what other sign from the Lord do I need? He came along right in the nick of time. Boy, right when I thought I would never find my bow. And just imagine, I was about to run off and leave him. So, ladies and gentlemen, listen up. If y'all know where the courthouse is in Chattanooga, Tennessee, we're going to get hitched there. And it's going to be great. I'm inviting all of y'all. <laughs> I'm going to be a beautiful bride. Well, Sabby, what do you think about all that? It's kind of what I thought, too. But on our channel, we got love and laughs and DIYs. We got love and laughs and DIYs. We got some love and laughs and DIYs. We got love and laughs and DIYs. Yeah. Woohoo, baby. Yeah. We love y'all. I think you guys are really going to like this. I did 14 different tear trade projects to represent the 14th of February. So let's get into our first one. I got these little foam dice from Dollar Tree. And they're the ones that have two in a pack. And I'm going to make the cutest little marshmallow man you've ever seen. All you need is your dice and you're going to need two white balloons. Or whatever color that you want your marshmallow to be but I wanted mine to be white. So you just take and cut the balloons kind of in half. You cut them at the bottom of the neck where it starts to get round, and you just pull it over the dice. It's very easy. You just kind of stretch it around there, and then you're going to do that to the second balloon because you want them to be totally white. You don't want to see any of that orange through there. And then I just cut it off a little bit at the bottom, and don't worry, it lays flat with no problem. Then I used a pencil to make his little eyes and his little mouth. And I just made a simple little eyes and mouth. I'm no artist. And then I went over it with the black Sharpie. Now I'm going to take this color called Pink Blush. And this is by Apple Barrel. And I just barely have a little bit on my brush to make his little cheeks all cute and rosy. Now I take my stickers that I got from Dollar Tree and I painted some light pink and some with that blush pink and I just took two of the blush pink ones off and stuck them on the cheeks. I'm taking the color Truffle by Waverly because it looks like chocolate and I just kind of poured it on the top of him and kind of helped it with the brush to run down off of the side just like chocolate would be doing if it somebody poured chocolate on his head and it turned out so cute. I just think it's adorable. I just kind of rolled the paint around with my hand to make sure that it's not going to drip down too far. And then I dried it with my little dryer. Then I took the word love 
off of this little transfer sheet that came from the Dollar Tree, and it's a small little word that says love. And what I'm gonna do is take this little wooden sticker, it came from Dollar Tree also, most of the things here did, and I painted it blush pink, I let it dry, and then after I dried it, I took that word love and just transferred it on there. And to transfer it, all you do is pull the back off and then you get something in either your fingernail or some little stick or something like I'm using here. And you just kind of scratch over it and then the word is going to be transferred on there. So I thought it would be really cute to kind of just stick this right on the top of his head in the chocolate. And then I took a ribbon that was a sheer ribbon. I cut it in half and just tied a little shoestring bow. And we're going to stick that on the side of his little head. And then I also added my signature touch, which was a couple of little buttons up there on that little heart that says love. And look how sweet he turned out. And it just made me want a Hershey bar. Moving right along, I'm going to try to go as quickly as possible for the sake of the video so I don't bore you guys and it's not so long. I got this little red truck at Dollar General for a dollar. And as you see, it was red for Christmas. And I've got this color called Sunset Rose, which is a very pinky bubblegum pink color and it's by Home Decor, and I had to give this two coats of the pink. Now, this Home Decor is a chalk paint, and like I said, it took two coats to cover up over the red, but I finally did cover it up, and it even had like a little wreath in the front of it, which was red and green, so the part that was red, I painted it pink, and it actually looked like it was made that way, like a little spring truck. It was so cute. After I got the two coats of the Sunset Rose color, I let it totally dry. And then I wanted to put some glitter on it because I thought it would make it just cute as a button and just kind of sparkly. And this glitter is like an iridescent glitter. It's not really white. It's kind of like a, it's just a sparkly clear white. You see the color? It's so pretty. I put it all over the truck and then I took some of my little stickers again that I had painted with that blush pink color, and I'm gonna put these on the wheels of the truck. And out of a sticker pack from the Dollar Tree, I got this wood heart, and I picked out the word on that transfer sheet that says sincerely. And it's an also a transfer, and I just put it on that little wood heart and used my little scraper to get it off there. I glued that heart down to the bed of the truck, and then I took a little arrow off of that transfer sheet and I put it on the door of the truck and then I finished off by getting some buttons and putting it under that word sincerely on the heart and it turned out so cute. Every tiered tray has to have the little truck on it. Now we're moving right along to number three and this one is my favorite. It's going to be the little gnome. So I just took a regular size sock and I'm going to cut the sock off right up above the heel. Then I added some beans in the bottom of the sock so the little gnome would stand up. And I didn't put a whole lot. I would say it was probably like three tablespoons. And I show you here how much is in there. It's not very much at all. Because I only wanted the beans for the purpose of holding him down like a little weight. So I took the rest of the sock that I didn't use and kind of balled it up, and that's going to be the body of the gnome. And then I just tied it off with my rubber band. The fuzzy gray sock is going to be his hat. So I cut right after the toe part, as you see, because you can make two hats out of this. This can be one hat. And I didn't really like the way that looked. It was kind of a tobogganny look. And at first I thought I was going to use that one. But I liked the other hat better because it kind of flopped down to the side. And it just looked like a little gnome's hat to me. And it was cute. So what I did was right where the heel is at, I tied it with the rubber band and flipped it inside out. And this is the part that's going to go on his head. And you just cuff the bottom part up, and it just looks natural like it is his little hat. I'm 
I used a little half bead for his nose and I just glued that right underneath where the little cuff of the hat is. And the only fur that I had to make his little beard was like a ribbon that I had from Christmas and it was a furry ribbon. So what I did was cut it in the shape of a rainbow and that's the part that I glued underneath the nose and it came right up to the sides of the hat perfectly to make his little beard. And then I just made sure that it was all glued on the sides right so it's not going to look strange and it actually did look like a little beard. And this is what we've got so far. I have a little heart that I made the other day. I had taken a napkin and decoupaged it on this little heart. And I'm going to glue this to the side of my gnome and it looks like he's holding it. And it's the cutest little thing. Then I took some more of those hearts and I painted them with a color called seashell pink. And this is a color by Folk Art. And I'm going to place a couple of these little hearts on his hat when they dry. And then I just added my signature button. And the way that I like to do that is put one larger button and then a smaller one on top of it. I just think that's cute. And my gnome is so adorable. If you're enjoying this video so far and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, here's your chance. Hit that little red subscribe button and become a part of our family here on YouTube. We would love to have you. And guys, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up because it really helps support my channel here on YouTube. All right, let's keep moving into number four. This is one of those small houses that came from the Dollar Tree a few months ago. And it's no secret that I love to decoupage with napkins. So I have this beautiful napkin that has these two little angel babies on it. And I really, really like the pink flowers that's at the bottom of it. And I thought that would be cute to decoupage that on the front of my house. I use a little Mod Podge on my fingers to make sure that I have separated all of those layers of that napkin because you have to get down to the last layer. And most napkins have two layers on them. So all I did was just put a little bit of Mod Podge on the front of the house because it was so small, I just did it all in one section and I laid the flowers down over the top of it and just kind of used my brush and my fingers very gently to press it into that house. I find it easier anytime I'm decoupaging anything to do it into small sections. So I did that first section and now I'm gonna do the other side. And as you see, this house is very small, but you just have more control when you do it in smaller sections. You have to work very slow and just be careful and always have your saran wrap ready so that you can use it to press down and get any wrinkles out. And I just kind of went around the side of the house with the napkin that was left over and then got the bottom part of it off. I made sure to really get up inside the roof really good and around the edges where that napkin would lay. Then I thought it would look good to paint the roof this seashell pink color. And I don't know what I was thinking because after I put it on there, I really didn't like it. So I went back over it with the gray color. And when I use my gray color, I always like to use that apple barrel pewter gray, it's called. It's kind of a darker gray. And that's what I used eventually to get the roof. I used a small nail file to get in all of the little crevices of the house to get in the doorway and then it had a couple of little windows and i find it easiest to use some type of an emery board or nail file to get the napkin off because it comes right off easily and on the sides you can just use your little sanding sponge or anything you've got i even cut my emery board in half so i could get down in there a little bit easier now for the fun part, we're gonna put some glitter on this house and make it beautiful. 
I just put a little bit of Mod Podge on the roof when it was dry, and I sprinkled my iridescent glitter on the top. I did the exact same thing to the front of the house by putting some Mod Podge on top of the napkin and then the glitter and it turned out so pretty. I don't normally do a lot of glitter, but for Christmas and Valentine's Day, that's an excuse to play in your glitter and I think it turns out beautiful. I took my chalk paint called Sunset Rose by Home Decor and just painted the sides of the house that color and the back of the house and it just matched the flowers perfectly. And it just makes a cute, sweet little house to go on your tiered tray. I took one of my very small solar wood flowers and painted it with the Sunset Rose also. I added my little rosette to the house and my signature button, and I think this is cute as a button. Now we're moving right along into number five. I have a small wooden tag that I purchased off of Amazon, and anything that I mention that I get off of Amazon is always in my Amazon store link below in case you guys are in need of it. And I got like eight of these little tags, I think, for just a couple of dollars, and they're always handy to have. They're blank. They don't have anything on them. And I took my pewter gray and went over both sides and I sprayed it with just a little bit of water. So instead of coloring this gray, it's going to be kind of like a stain. We're going to do a little decoupage again. Surprise, surprise. I love to do my decoupage. So what we're going to do is just do it in pieces like I showed you before. I've got this gorgeous napkin and I get a lot of my napkins off of eBay because you can get like two or three napkins for just two bucks with shipping and all. And I mean, that's all you need is a couple, you know. So anyways, I do it in like little sections like I did earlier. I just put my Mod Podge down, lay it down, and I always use my saran wrap because that way the napkin doesn't stick to your fingers and you can get all those wrinkles out. I'm sorry that I sped this up a little bit, but just for the sake of trying to get the video done, I don't want to bore you guys to death showing you things that you know how to do or that I do repetitive. You know what I mean? I've got one of these gorgeous hearts that came from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to go over it with my Sunset Rose. And I absolutely love these transfers from the Dollar Tree. It's the ones that have all the French writing on them, and I love French Farmhouse. A lot of people ask me, what is French Farmhouse? And it's kind of like shabby chic, but it's got a little bit more of a farmhouse fling to it, if that makes sense. So, I absolutely love this transfer. Like I said, I like for all of my stuff on my tiered tray to have kind of the same theme, which on this one, it's all pink. It's all buttons. <laughs> and we have, you know, a lot of the French writing. So, anyways... I'm just going to take my beautiful little heart and put it on the side, kind of sideways on my little tag. And then I use my sanding sponge to get those edges off. Now, when you decoupage, you definitely want to use a sanding sponge because it makes the edges perfect. I am simply going to use this little transfer that says Je am, which means I love you in French. I do know some little things. And because I speak Spanish, it's strange, but a lot of the words kind of look the same. You just have to pronounce them a little different. Anyways, that's just a little tidbit. Not that anybody even wants to know, but I just thought I'd throw that in there. So, look at this gorgeous little hemp rope. I got this at the Dollar General, and I really like it better than I do my jute twine. So I'm going to use some of that and I'm wrapping around it like I'm almost fanning it, making it look like a fan. It goes back to the same spot and then I'm just kind of going in a different spot every time so it looks a little fanned out. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. 
Isn't that cute? It's just a little something different. I don't know. And so I'm going to take my little buttons and do my little usual button thing. One larger button and one smaller one. And I like to do them different colors in case you hadn't noticed. Because I just think that just it just brings a cute little touch. I don't know. I like to add just little tidbits to my projects to kind of make it. I just think the details is kind of what makes it. And I stuck a couple of my little heart stickers on the top. Now let's move in to number six. We are scooting. Off of Amazon, I got this small little rolling pins and I think they are adorable. I love these on my tiered tray. And I just have a little bit of that pewter gray left over on my brush. And so I'm gonna use that and I'm going to put a little bit more and a little dash of water and I kind of wanted it to be a stain because I'm going to decoupage around the middle part of it. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I think if I do that and use the same napkin, it just, everything on the tray has a theme. It's all got the same colors, the same, you know, everything just kind of goes together. And I like that. I think that's pretty. Now on the handles of my little rolling pin. I'm going to do them a dark pewter gray. I did not do them like a stain. It was mainly that middle part. I didn't want that middle part to be so bright because we're going to put that napkin over it and I didn't want it to overpower the napkin because most of the napkin's white. Okay, so I've got my cute little napkin again that's got the pink flowers on it, and I just put a little bit of Mod Podge, and I kind of rolled it, if you'll see here. And I do it in my small sections, like I was telling you before. That's how I always do my decoupage, is in small sections. And I always make sure to use my Saran Wrap, because that way your fingers don't stick to the napkin, and you can get those wrinkles out with the Saran Wrap. It just takes a lot of practice, and I've been practicing a lot more lately because I, you can do so much with these napkins and decoupaging. I just think it's so pretty. I really like it. And then I just cut off the excess, and I just kind of rolled it around with my finger. Then I just finished it up by adding just a little bit more of the Mod Podge around it to make sure that we have everything sealed really good. I'm going to use a little bit of my French writing again. I want this one that says XOXO, and that means hugs and kisses. And do you know that it took me years, like I was a teenager before I figured out what that meant. I was always like, what's XOXO? And then I finally figured that out. I just like to leave little tidbits along the way, I guess. I don't know if anybody even cares when I found out what XOXO means, but I just thought I'd throw it in there while we're watching me put that on there. <laughs> And I love these transfers. They're so easy to work with. I took two of my little hearts that I colored with the pink blush color, and I'm going to stick those on the sides. I know this is going a little bit quick, but at the end of this video, I'm going to show you everything on the tiered tray and slow it down so you can get a good picture of everything. I added my little buttons here on the end too, but I, for some reason I didn't show that part, and I think this is sweet. Now, before we move on any further, I just need to take a moment to thank Miss Corey. She has a channel called Crafted by Corey, and she is hosting this collab today. She does this every month. It's her minis challenge, and there is a lot of talented ladies in this playlist. So, I'm going to leave the description link down below, and I'm going to leave Corey's channel down below. So, go down and check her out and check out this playlist when you're finished with my video. I think you're going to find a lot of DIY inspiration for your home decor. Now let's move right on into number seven. I made these really easy so they would be quick to recreate for your tiered tray for Valentine's Day. I've got this cute little galvanized looking letter that came from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to take one of these little heart stickers to cover up that red heart that's on it. Because you know red's not the color I'm going with. I took some of that sheer pink ribbon that I've been using and I made one of the little bows that they call the cause bows where you make the loop around it and then just bring down the middle part and I tied it with my little hemp rope 
I put this in the middle part of the little letter and then I took one of those little stickers that I had colored and stuck it right in the middle of my little ribbon. And of course, I'm gonna take some of my little French words from the Dollar Tree off my little transfer sheet and I'm gonna put those on the bottom. I found one that said postcard and one that said sent with love. And so I put those on there because I thought that was sweet. I'm gonna put one up in the middle on that heart on the top and then one down at the bottom. That was a little hard to see. It said handle with care. And then I'm gonna take my hemp rope and I'm gonna kinda do the same thing that I did with that other heart where I fan out my rope. And I think that's just really pretty. It just gives it a little added touch. And I stuck a few of those little pink heart stickers on there too. I have some cardstock from Hobby Lobby and it has music notes all over it. And I'm going to take this and roll it up and then just tape it. And I did two of those to make it look like little letters. And I topped it off with a little solo wood flower. We are moving right into number eight. I have three of those little wooden heart stickers from the Dollar Tree. One is plain, one is the light pink, and one is the brighter pink. And I'm just gonna take that one that was plain and paint it white with apple barrel paint. And I found this little thing at Discovery Outlet for 29 cents. It's like a mini little flower planter and it's made of po like pottery. It's so cute. So I always keep the stems from flowers that I cut down like my fake flowers that I cut down, I keep the little stems because you never know when you need them. And I'm just gonna stick those on the backs of these little hearts to make them look like little flowers. And I'm gonna take another one of those little transfers from the Dollar Tree that has the French writing. And I looked this one up to see what this meant. And it said, to live without love is not to live. And I thought that was so cute. So I'm gonna put that on the front of my planter. I had to add just a little bit of styrofoam so that these would stand up. And I'm just going to add my little hay on the top there before I put my little heart flowers, and then I'm just gonna stick them down in there. I wanted to put a little bit more of that iridescent glitter on the white one because the other two had glitter on it, so I put a little bit of Mod Podge and my glitter, and I added a little bit of the moss because I think that looked prettier than the hay. I added my little heart stickers, one to each of them. And then I'm just gonna do my little signature button move down at the bottom. Let's go into number nine. I've got one of the glass bottles that came out at Christmas time that had the Christmas tree and the snow in it. And I took the Christmas tree out and we're gonna put some of this glitter vase filler inside of it because to me, they look like little peels. So we're gonna do a love potion. So I just stuck the pink and the white ones in there. I think I stuck maybe like one or two of the little red ones in there just for a little fling. On Cricut Design Space, they had a little heart that said love potion number nine. So I printed that out on some of that vinyl that came from the Dollar Tree. I wanted to try it. I had some of the pink glitter kind. And I had to color in the words because since I didn't color my bottle, you couldn't see it as much. So I just used a little white marker that came from the Dollar Tree and colored in the words. I added my signature little double button down on the bottom and I added one little piece of that transfer with the French words. This was sweet and simple and quick, and that's how I like to do my stuff on my tiered trays. We're already going into number 10, guys. I have one of those mailboxes that came from the Dollar Tree at Christmas time, and it had the green and red inside of it. So I took my Apple Barrel Pink Blush, and I just painted kind of around the inside, anywhere where you're actually going to be able to see it. 
Now, I'm not going to have this open all the way. It's just going to barely be open. So, I just kind of went around the inside parts that you would see and around the rim. I took some more of that transfer with a French writing on it. And this one had a butterfly on it. And I put that on the side. I hope I'm not boring y'all by using that same transfer over and over. But like I said, I like everything on my tiered tray to be cohesive. And so we're doing the buttons, the pink, and the French transfer. I just think everything looks better when it's all kind of the same theme, you know. I took one of those beautiful little wooden hearts that came from the Dollar Tree. And I put that on the top of the flag on the mailbox. I thumbed through my buttons because I was getting really low on my buttons at this point, and I did my little signature button. And by the way, these buttons came from the Dollar Tree, just a buck for all these different colored buttons. And I've got these little pearl stickers that came from the Dollar Tree, and I put that on the pink part that was going around. Then I took a few of those little heart stickers that I had colored and I put some of the dark pink and the light pink because I think it's cute when you kind of mix your colors up like that. I put those down toward the bottom of the mailbox. And then around the white part, kind of around the rim of the mailbox, I went up and around with the hearts. And this mailbox really turned out cute. I didn't think that it was going to be that cute when I started, but it really did turn out adorable. I added a couple more of those little hearts toward the top of the mailbox because it had a few little spots that were just uh, didn't have anything there. And I felt like it needed a little bit of something else. And I think this is just so cute, y'all. And a part of that sticker says airmail. We are going on to number 11. This little milk can is always a staple on my tiered trays. I don't care what season it is. I love it on my tiered trays. I got it at Hobby Lobby for about $2. I think it had $2.99 on it. So it's like $1.50 when you get it half off. And I had this little heart that came off of something. I'm not really sure. It came off of one of my other projects. And I keep everything that I have. So I glued that to it. And I wrapped that sheer ribbon around it. And I think the color of this ribbon is so pretty. It's my favorite color. It's kind of a mauve color. I think that's so pretty. And I just wrapped it around in a little shoestring bow. And I added my little buttons. And on the top of my button, I added one of those little heart stickers. I took another one of those little wooden hearts, and I'm just going to glue it kind of catty corner up in the top of my little can so it will stand up. Then I took some more of that new music note paper, and I cut out two little pieces again, rolled it up and taped it like it's two little love letters, and I stuck it in the top. This one turned out really, really pretty. And one of my subscribers sent me a package that had a bunch of different keys in it. And there was one in there that said love, and I tied it around the top. And I love when I get sweet little things like that for my subscribers. I always try to use them in my DIYs. Guys, if y'all have stuck around this far, thank you so much for sticking with me through this whole video. And number 12, 13, and 14 are kind of going to be all together because they're the same theme. I ordered these off of Amazon. It's a little window, a ladder, and a fence. And I just think these are adorable to go on tiered trays. And these are in my Amazon store if you want any. I made a simple little bow from the sheared ribbon and I'm going to put that on my little fence. I found some of those little wood letters from Dollar Tree that says forever and I stuck that on my fence also. Now these little pieces came with these little small wreaths on them so they were already pre-made and I put the wreath back on my little window and my ladder and I'm going to add those little wood hearts to those. The little wreaths came with a black and white gingham bow, and it didn't go with my scheme for my tiered tray. 
So I just took that off and that's the reason why I had pulled the wreaths off. And then I'm just adding my buttons to everything. And like that's why I said I kind of did these three together and it made the video go a little bit quicker because I always feel like I'm boring you guys showing you things like painting and things like that that I know that you already know how to do. But I just added my little heart stickers to everything for some little embellishment. Oh, I hope you guys are going to stick around for the bloopers and to see Sabby. Everybody's been missing Sabby because he missed the last video. In case y'all didn't know, I've just been putting Sabby's little song and dance at the end with the bloopers because I just felt like it worked a little bit better that way. And I'm just going to kind of show you each one of these kind of together. And I got this beautiful tiered tray from Amazon. It's a three-tiered tray. And it was like 50 bucks. But I mean, you know, those things are very expensive anyways. And I've been wanting one forever. So I'm going to show you everything set up on my new tiered tray. Opens up. And it's going to have my little letters coming out of it. There's one of them. Now, this was a little thing that I made last year, and all it is is little heart pillows. I made it by cutting simple heart shapes out of fabric and then sticking a little bit of pillow filling down in it, and that's all I did to that. See, look, I can put fit everything on this one. Wow. I've always wanted a bigger tiered tray, a decent tiered tray. Every tiered tray I've ever got, I got at a thrift store and pieced together or because they cost so much. And so this is the first time I really splurged and said I'm gonna do this because I've always wanted one and never been able to get one. So I got me one and I'm really happy with this one. Put my little house back there, my little rolling pin. Wow, everything fits on this, it's crazy. Put all my pretty, and I got these at the Hobby Lobby last year after Christmas, they were left over. And I mean, technically they're Christmas decorations, but look how pretty those are. You can use those all year, especially springy. They're springy looking to me. So I'm gonna put those here. And let's see, my love potion. And this is another one of my favorite little things is my little flower. It's kind of hard to do this from the back because I can't see what I'm doing here. And my little birdie. That's my bird that I made on my last video. I will link that video down below. It's just a video where I'm showing um, where I did some decoupage and stuff. It's Valentine's also. It's really nice. I'm gonna have to get in the front here for just a second in y'all's view so I can put some of this stuff up here where it can be seen. Wow, I'm really happy with this tiered tray. Really, really. That's just a little flower. Uh-oh, something fell, I heard it. All right, here's the last parts. Okay, stick my house on there. Every tiered tray has to have one of these, and I made this last year, so I just stuck it on there. Put it right there in the front where it can be seen. Another little heart. After the pictures, in just a second, stay tuned for the bloopers and Sabby. Everybody, it's Crafty Bobby Joe, Kathy's gorgeous cousin from down the holler that's going to make it to Hollywood and become a big old Hollywood star right here from this here channel. <laughs> 
and this here is my show, and I wanted to tell you guys, boy, you just don't know what's happened this week. Guess what? That Buford done went and did it. Guess what Buford did? He called me the other day and told me that that Sally Ann was nothing but a horse's patoot and that he still loves me and I just knew in my heart that Buford was made for me on account of it happened right here before Valentine's Day. Now what other kind of sign do you need? I mean, come on. Everybody knows that Buford is a handsome guy. But for him to look at me in that way, it just tickles my heartstrings. Bobby Joe, you need to listen to me and listen to me right now, young lady. Guys like that Buford are a dime a dozen. Now, I would rather break my arm than talk about anybody in any kind of negative way. But, honey, everybody in this here town knows that Buford ain't no good. Now, he is a ladies' man, and he is very good looking. But, honey, all he's gonna do is hurt you. Well, I don't care what you say, Mama. Guess what? I'm still going to become a big old Hollywood star because I just know that there's some agent out there watching this. And that you look at me and you say, wow, that girl's got it all. She can sing. She can dance. She's got looks. And her name is Bobby Jo Stillman. Now, listen. I'm going to send my headshots in again. If there's any big Hollywood agents out there, you need to come and find me because I'm about to move to California to get my dreams a-going. You know, me and Buford thought that it would be real original if we waited until Valentine's Day and that's when we're going to get married because ain't nobody ever thought of that plan before. <laughs> So, all of y'all are invited, and then I will be moving to Hollywood to become a big old Hollywood star. And ain't mama, ain't nobody gonna stop me. I'm headed to the top, guys. Well then, guys. I don't know about my cousin Bobby Joe, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I love you guys. And here's old Sabby Boy. Are you ready to sing our little song? I thought so. Because here on our channel, we got love and laughs and DIYs. We got love and laughs and DIYs. We got some love and laughs and DIYs. We got love and laughs and DIYs. Yeah. Woohoo, baby. Yeah. And we got some Bobby Joes. <laughs> I love you guys. I'll see y'all soon. Bye.